Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial with me that embroidery girl and today it's all about those stump work strawberries I've created a 3d embroidery using my favorite stitch woven picots but I've also got some flatness in there with the fishbone stitch which creates these really beautiful leaves I've got some tiny little flowers with some cast on stitch and some French knots so come and join me on this tutorial and find out exactly what I did so today I'm going to be working on a linen and I actually picked this linen up in Shepherd's Bush Market in West London. It's a really, really nice creamy type of colour which I think will go lovely with the greens and the reds. And it's also got a really nice weave which will mean that when I'm using the thick perlays and stuff it's just really easy to stitch through. Next is this variegated red thread and this is actually a Coates vintage thread. I'm not sure if you can get it anymore but I'm sure you can get something similar. This is a crochet cotton. This is going to be perfect for the 3D work, particularly the woven picots and it's going to make those strawberries really pop and look alive because of the shading. Alongside my strawberries, I'm gonna want some flowers. So I've decided to go for two different tones. First, I'm gonna be using this cream perlay floss. This is an anchor and this is in the number five. And then I'm also gonna be using this crochet thread. This is a stark white and it's a number 20, I believe, and you can find that anywhere. And then I'm gonna be doing lots and lots of greens. So I've got this sort of bluish green, and this darker green perle thread, again number five. And then I've got three different greens in the anchor floss. This is just like a yellowy lime green, a light green, and then a dark green, the same color as that perle that you can see there. For the flower middles, I'm gonna be using this yellow perle thread, number five, and then this embroidery floss in a deeper yellow. I'm using a water soluble pen. I picked this up off of eBay in a pack of five for two quid, and a fine liner. Next, I'm gonna need some needles. I'm gonna be using a fine beading needle for all my stump work elements. I'm going to use this Dana's needle for the fat woven picots, particularly when I'm using perlay thread. And I'm also gonna need this chenille needle. This is a number 18, and I'm gonna use this for all of my woven picots where I'm using floss. I always get asked about pins, particularly these crystal topped pins that I have in every video. These were about three quid off of eBay. Just search crystal pins and they'll come up. And finally, I'm gonna use my favorite scissors. These are the surgeon scissors that I use for everything. First things first, I'm gonna hoop up my linen in an embroidery hoop. And using a water soluble pen, I'm actually just gonna draw straight away my strawberries and the kind of design that I want. So I'm not thinking too much about this. I kind of am eyeballing it and saying that I know I roughly want to play around with the idea of about four strawberries, three to four strawberries and some leaves. I wanna have some 3D elements in there, but I'm just kind of seeing how it develops really on my hoop as I draw. Once I've got my strawberries, I'm gonna start adding the idea of some leaves in. So I'm just gonna add some swishy lines really at this point because I definitely don't want to add in a leaf shape per se because all of this is gonna be 3D. And once I'm done there, I'm gonna add a final strawberry and I really want this to be the focal point. I'm not sure if I'll stick to that idea throughout the embroidery, but I'd really like to have one big large fat strawberry in the middle. And I'm just gonna draw the idea of some more leaves just to see how the composition is going to look. I find drawing like this with a water soluble pen really, really helps my ideas, composition, and figuring out exactly what I want out of my designs. Once I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead with my fine liner and I'm actually gonna to start to add in some more definite lines so that I know exactly where my embroidery is going to need to be measured and all my patterns are gonna go. I'm gonna start with the strawberries and I'm just gonna mark them out with the fine liner just so I know the exact size and how big to make these woven picots. Next, I'm gonna draw in these squiggly lines that represent the leaves and some of the stalks. And then I'm gonna dot in the middle of these flowers just so I can have something more permanent as a marker for where they're going to go later. Okay, so we're gonna start the embroidery now. So I'm gonna start off firstly pinning out the woven pico area for this strawberry. So I'm gonna put a pin firstly at the center of this drawing, and you'll notice I'm around about two millimeters higher than the drawn line. And I'm gonna put a second pin right next door. You'll see there's not a lot of space at all. I wanna keep this weave for the strawberry woven pico very tight. 
and I'm actually going to push the ends down through the back of the fabric just to make sure that they're not going to get caught on anything. Again a third pin goes in and this is again very very close and then my last two pins are going to go in alongside the line slightly further down on the strawberry so that we've got that nice sort of shape that curvature to the top of the woven pico. It's worth noting at this point that the very ends of these pins are actually stabbed back through the fabric so that I can maintain a nice curvature at the bottom. Coming up at the bottom of the strawberry with your darner's needle, you're going to need to go underneath and then over the top of all these pins, underneath this one and then back down with your needle. Next you're going to need to come up in the same sort of space and go around these three innermost pins and then back down again at the bottom of the strawberry. Come up again for a final time and this time you're going to go up through all of these threads just to catch them and I'm going to put a loop here, I suppose you call it a buttonhole stitch just to catch all of them together like so. And once I've done that, I'm just going to go through the top again on the other side. And this is just going to doubly secure and make sure that all these threads are nice and fastened together. And now I'm going to begin weaving. So if you've ever watched this before, you'll know it's under, over, under, over, under, over, which basically just means that you're following this sequence of underneath that first one, over the top of this one, And then you're going to be going over that one, under that one. And you're going to repeat this until you fill up the space. Now, I don't work this in a straight line simply because the pattern is never, ever a straight line. So what I'm going to do is work between the pins. So I'm going to work between firstly these first three pins and then slowly branch out to cover all of the pins. And you'll see this process as I carry on. Once I get to my next pin, I'm actually going to separate those two threads by making sure that I put a stitch under over on both sides and then just carry on as normal. Now, sometimes I might want to put a buttonhole stitch there just to hold them two together. It's really going to depend on how fragile the stitch feels and you can feel that really underneath your needle. If it feels like it's going to break away, you'll need a little looping stitch or buttonhole stitch there. And if it doesn't, if it feels really secure and the threads are nice and tight, then just go ahead and keep weaving and just separate those two threads out. So I've progressed further down and you'll see that all of the top's done and all I'm going to do is continue on until I can weave in a straight line and again it's always under over, under over, under over and these strawberries are fairly small so this weaving process shouldn't take you too long even though we are using quite a fine thread to needle weave with. As I continue to weave through the strawberry, you'll notice how the variegation in the thread is actually making the strawberry look really, really alive. You've got all those different tones, which are just gonna sing against all of the greens. So it's going to look amazing, I think. As I approach the bottom, needle weaving becomes increasingly difficult. So I'm actually gonna remove the outermost two pins and then carry on weaving as normal. One of the things that I'm gonna have to be really careful about now that I've removed the pins is tension. So just be really sure to make sure all of your threads flat and don't pull too tightly so that you don't close up this bottom here. And once I've filled up this area with enough thread that I can no longer fit any more through, I will take the needle down and finish the embroidery. Remove the pins and then you're gonna have this amazing woven pico that looks like a strawberry. So next I'm gonna need some three millimeter thick felt and I'm gonna use a fine liner to just draw around the outside of this woven pico shape like so. Now, when I'm cutting it out, I'm going to make it significantly smaller than that shape that I drew. And I'm going to do this twice. I'm going to make one bigger one and then one smaller one, exactly like I've got here. Make sure that it fits inside the shape that you've drawn. And then taking a beading needle with some thread, this is just a normal cotton thread, I'm going to stitch it down with one big stitch 
and then a couple of stitches over the edge just to hold it all in place so that I've got a nice padding underneath the woven pico. A big habit of mine, I mean if anyone's ever been on a normal workshop with me you'll know, I always get everyone to stitch the felt down really really well. In this case when we're doing this type of uh, stump work it doesn't really matter if it's stitched down really really well, it's just more a habit for me I guess. I like to make sure that all the edges are nice and stitched and I have that little bit of a curvature you know around the edges so i'm just gonna lay the strawberry on top now and make sure it all fits and i'm quite happy with that so now i'm going to begin stitching i'm just using the same thread and it's only just one strand so one strand with a knot at the bottom still with the beading needle i'm making tiny tiny stitches all the way around the edge and i'm going to do lots and lots of stitching here just to make sure that that woven pico completely covers the felt inside and i've got a really really nice plump strawberry So next I'm going to create a woven pico leaf and I'm going to do this very irregularly. I'm not looking for perfection at all. I just want to create sort of a circular shape that I can manipulate into a 3D position. So I'm going to use five pins and I usually like to use an odd number like so. I'm just going to pin them in sort of a fan shape and I'm going to take my green perle thread and come all the way around the outside of those pins and then back down. Then again, uh, another thread goes around the three top pins and back down. And then a final pin is gonna come up in the center and wrap around the center pin. And then your weaving is going to begin. So just like you worked the strawberry, the sequence is up and over, up and over, up and over. And because this is a relatively small shape and it's pretty standard for a woven pico, this type of shape, you're not going to need any buttonhole stitches or anything like that. Just keep weaving until you can go in a straight line and then all the way down. Finish off your woven pico leaf by filling up the remaining space at the very bottom, bottom sorry and then taking your needle through the fabric to the other side. You can do a little back stitch on the back if you want to, or you can just leave it with that thread on there ready for the next woven pico. Then remove your pins. I'm just gonna manipulate this a bit and fan out the threads and stuff. I really want it to have that slight curvature that you can see happening. That happens with perlay threads when you start to fan them out. So. I'll probably stitch this into place in this type of position, but I'm just gonna play with the fanning out of these threads just to see how 3D and what this 3D element's gonna look like. And once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna go ahead and recreate a similar shape. Again, no rhyme, reason, or pattern really. I just want like an overly type of shape, so I'm gonna keep my pins fanned out. I'm gonna be using five pins, and I wanna create some 3D stump work leaves with this woven pico stitch. So all the way around the outside, again, all the way around the three inner pins, and then around the central pin. And once I've done that, I'm going to begin my weaving. Again, exactly the same formula, under over, under over, until you filled in the space. So I want to brighten my piece up now. So I'm actually gonna use this anchor thread to weave into the end of this sleeve. So I'm going to do a reef knot. I'm gonna take one side of the thread and go over the other. And then with the opposite thread, this one, I'm going to go over the top of that one. So one side goes over and then the other side goes over and that gives you a nice firm knot. Keep pulling really hard on this knot, pull the two ends, pull the actual strings that are long, if that makes sense. I don't know the, the correct terms for it, but just give it a really good tug. Make sure that it's not gonna come out. And then once you're happy, just go ahead and take a pair of scissors and snip those ends off really, really close to the knot so the knot is almost unnoticeable. 
So carry on weaving and you'll notice sometimes that, that little knot can get caught. So just be careful, make sure that you pull it through correctly and you should end up with a really nice two-toned leaf. So I've taken the pins out and you'll see I've got a really, really nice little leaf there that's standing up on its own and is 3D. So I fast forwarded ahead and actually created this third little leaf and that was out of the remainder of the thread from before. And now I'm gonna go ahead and create the top leaves for the flower and the stalk. So I'm gonna put a pin in at an angle like so and I'm gonna come up with a new thread now this is a bluish green perlay thread and I am still actually using that long darners. So feel free to change over the needle if you want to because at this point creating such a small woven pico can be very tricky using such a big needle. Come up and create a center line and then just carry on weaving. Probably around about six or seven stitches should fill this space up entirely and then just remove the pin and take the needle down through the fabric. And you should have a perfect little leaf for the top of your strawberry. Then you're gonna to need to repeat that process again on the other side so that you have two little leaves. And once it's finished, it's gonna look something like this. Next, I'm going to add a stalk. So I'm gonna come up in the middle of those two woven picots with my needle in exactly the center line where I want my stalk to be. Insert the needle in exactly this position. And then you're gonna take your thread and loop it over the top of the needle. So you can see there's a loop there. All I've done is twist the thread over to create this loop. This is also known as a cast on stitch if you've ever done knitting. So I'm going to just put around about six cast on stitches on this needle. And once I've got enough on there, I'm just gonna measure it to make sure it's the right length. And once I'm happy, I'm going to thread the needle back through with the thread and just bring this needle straight down through the stitches and the fabric. And you'll see you have this really pretty little detached stalk. This stitch is called drizzle stitch and we're going to be using this throughout the strawberry making process creating these stalks. So next I'm going to take this cream perle thread and create some petals. So I'm going to put a knot at the bottom of this single strand and then put roughly around five millimeters of fabric on the pin head. Do this type of shape, so three pins create this type of petal shape Obviously, you're, you know the drill by now. Thread goes down all the way around the pins. Thread comes up to create a central line. And then we're just going to weave until we get to a point where we've got a nice little roughly five millimeter long uh, petal. Once I've done that, I'm gonna take out my pins and just bring the thread down through the fabric. And then I'm gonna repeat that process three more times. So in the end, I have four petals. Then I'm gonna take my beading needle with the cotton that we used to cover over the strawberry and finish that off to just stitch down these petals. And I'm actually tucking these under. So they've got like a really 3D look to them. And once I've done that, I'm gonna do the middle part of the flower with some yellow perlay thread that you can see here on the same needle, wrap that thread around the needle three times because I want quite a chunky French knot. I'm gonna bring that needle down to the fabric and I'm gonna pull the wraps down too and then pull the needle all the way through. And I have a really pretty French knot. Then I'm going to use my beading needle again with the same cotton and I'm just going to jump over and put some tacking stitches here in these leaves just to make sure that they're really nice and curled over and raised and they look really nice and plump. And then I'm going to tack down this little stalk because it keeps flying around everywhere. So I'm going to put one tacking stitch in there just to hold it in place and it should look like this. Okay, so now I'm just going to repeat this sort of process 
throughout the entire video. So I'm going to again make a strawberry, doing exactly the same thing that I've done before. This one's going to be a larger strawberry. So here you can see me playing around with the pins, just seeing what my pattern is going to be like. I like to get an evenness between the pins so that I know that I'm going to have a nice even weave. Um, and I'm pretty much going to copy the same formula that I did before. And once I finish this one, I'm going to do the other strawberry and then my final fourth strawberry at the bottom here. So again, I'm going to repeat the process. I'm going to cut some thick felt out, stitch it down and then stitch the strawberry shape around it so that I have another 3D strawberry. And you can see me finishing off that there. And then I'm gonna do the last two strawberries. Now I've actually only got one piece of felt here. So I'm just stitching it down like I did before. And then I'm gonna take the strawberry shape over the top and just stitch it all the way around again. Once I've done that, I'm going to do my final strawberry. And then I'm going to need to do all of the leaves and the stalks. So if you remember, this is done with these tiny little woven picots. And a drizzle stitch just taken through, sorry, to um, create the stalks. And I'm gonna need to do that for all of the strawberries like so. I'm really happy with that. So now I'm going to add some more leaves. I really like the idea of all these leaves being at the side. So I'm going to repeat the process that I did for all of the others and just put a good few pins in there, come up and come down again. I'm going to use this same thread that I used for the stalks just because I have it already on my needle. And I'm just going to keep weaving until I have a lovely 3D leaf. Remove the pins and take your beading needle with your thread on there and place a tacking stitch just to hold it down and get it nice and curved. And then I'm going to add a few more flowers in like before. So for these petals, I'm going to go a bit smaller because I want that first petal to be quite a central point. So I'm actually going to just keep it one pin and do a standard sized pico, sort of woven pico in the normal way. So it's just one pin, you come up, you go around the needle and then you're going to have your central line come up and you're going to begin weaving just like you would normally. Once you're finished, take out the pin and then you're going to need to add two more petals so you have a tiny little three petal and then put a French knot in the middle. Once that's done, I'm going to add another flower here and then add another one of the large leaves at the side of this strawberry. Take the pins out. This is always my favourite part of making a woven pico, and you've got a lovely big 3D leaf. So I'm going to repeat that process a good few times. I want lots and lots of 3D leaves around these strawberries. So I'm probably going to put in maybe around about four or five at least. I'm going to use all different colours. So I've got my dark green, I've got this bluish green, and I'm going to add this jade green as well in the embroidery floss. So at this point, I've drawn on a leaf and I just want to add some flat elements in there. So I'm actually going to start a fishbone stitch for my leaf. So I'm going to come down and make just a straight stitch. And then either side of this straight stitch, I'm going to add another straight stitch at an angle. And you can see here, I'm using that limey green colored floss that I had earlier on in the very beginning of the video. So that second stitch that I'm going to do here, the second angled stitch, is going to finish just underneath the first angled stitch. And you'll see I have the beginning of a leaf top right there. So all I'm gonna do is follow that pattern, taking one straight stitch down, then one straight stitch down on the other side and work that pattern all the way down until I've finished my uh, leaf.
So I've just finished that leaf and I'm just going to use the same floss just to create a stem using straight stitch and then also to just couch down this little 3D woven pico here. I'm going to use this floss to do all of the stems in. So just a back stitch, one straight stitch, come a little bit further away and then go back down. Yep, super simple stuff. I'm going to take that crochet cotton if you remember from the beginning now and I'm actually going to do some cast on stitches so I'm going to come up with a needle go down with the needle and then I actually take the needle all the way through the fabric and pop up near the beginning entrance point you don't have to you can stay in the fabric I just like the freedom that this provides and then I'm going to in exactly the same way that I did the drizzle stitch take the thread that's nearest to the needle and put some loops on now this stitch is a little bit different from drizzle stitch obviously because it is attached and not detached but it basically is the same you're going to have a very similar effect I am using the Dana's needle so I'm going to have a very very nice thick cast on and I'm not pulling too tight I've got roughly around about six stitches on there and when I pull it tight I'm pulling it tight around the little dots that I drew and I'll repeat that again twice and I'll have a really pretty little flower so I've turned the light on now and I'm adding all my flowers I am really really sorry for the lighting situation in this video you can see here I am just adding some extra thread with the leaves and added some French knots for the middles of these flowers and I am pretty much done so you can see here with the embroidery finish, there's a mixture of low relief, high relief, flat work. It's a really, really nice embroidery actually. I've really enjoyed doing this one. If you've enjoyed it too, I'm kind of sorry about the lighting. I'm getting better as I go on. If you've enjoyed it too, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you again next time.